Hi, I'm Andrew from TTG and welcome to our next business advice video, how to plan and successfully host a client event. And with me today are two guys that have been doing this for a few years now, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Mark from Swords Travel, uh, we're based in Wimbledon. Um, we've been open our retail store since last September and we've run a series of client events in the last six months. I'm Danny Sperling, I'm from Minty Highway, I consult for Abbott's Travel, have done for the last eight years hosting and putting on their client events and implementing them and everything in between. Okay, great. Let's hear the top tips. What are the benefits of hosting it in the store? That would definitely be the fact that your clients are used to coming to that store, they know the location, but also brand new clients, at least you're starting to build that them knowing where to come for future inquiries and the bookings as well. I think from the store itself, like you say, it's got to be wheelchair accessible, it needs to be in a prominent location, easy parking if you've got parking in the area, easy access by a tube, bus or whatever, you, whatever your transport is. One of the things I would say to take into consideration is definitely the size of the store and how many people can, can you actually fit into that space. Uh, when we first started doing events, we probably said, oh, we can probably fit 15 to 20 max. And by the time we got 15 people in the store, plus the staff, plus the suppliers, it did feel a little bit busy and gets quite hot. So also think about your temperature, the actual space you've got. Eight agencies uh, can partner with a number of different local businesses um, and spaces. I think creating the right environment is the key to a successful event. Um, as Mark says, it's about the uh, facilities that you can provide. Does the event flow nicely? And sometimes in store, we've tried both, and some work for in store, but some work better in the right space. So in terms of the right partnership, I think locality is important, uh, making sure that uh, people can get there easily, the facilities are right, and making sure that the event flows are all very important aspects. In terms of the best time to host an event, um, I would personally say from experience that midweek works better. I think weekends, everybody has commitments. Time is a, is a real factor for people. So I think you need to make it as easy for people to attend as possible. We've had some really great success with doing uh, Thursday evenings, kind of midweek, Wednesday or Thursday nights, I personally think work really well. And the time of it is really important. If you are going to ask people to come straight from work, then you do need to think about making sure they've got some food, making sure that, again, people are comfortable with it there. Uh, in terms of how many people to invite, again, would depend on the kind of event that you're putting on. If you're putting on um, a specific focused event around, you know, eight to ten people can work really well. We've had great success with, with 100 people, so it really depends on what you want to achieve, thinking about what your objective is and then working out how many people you want to be there. Um, I think it's important to plan this in advance. So we came up with a 12 month marketing strategy where we choose suppliers for every single month based on the destination or the product that they offer. Um, and also making sure that, that product is relevant to the time of year. So for example, if you know that Japan's really popular to book in March, then Japan would be the key time to book that event and make sure that clients are ready to, to come in during them dates. Um, I think we tend to choose suppliers that, that want to do something a little bit different, but also will commit to the marketing plan rather than it just being the event, they'll commit to the window theme, the videos, the social media, and have that whole 360 marketing content. I think it's really important that you uh, have the right supplier partner when you're putting on an event as well. Um, if you're going to have a presentation that's going to keep people entertained, the speaker and the presenters are really crucial to that event running. So doing your homework, talking to them in advance, planning the event really well, and their personality complementing that destination, that's the key to an event going really, really well. I think it's really important as well to gauge the size of your audience. If you've got 15 people, maybe it is more appropriate to have a presentation, but if you've only got seven or eight people, sometimes it complements it better if you can just sit down and have a more informal discussion. And I think it makes the clients feel more at ease as well if you've got that scenario. First thing you've got to look at is your own client database. I think there's nobody better than to go to your own clients that you've got. What we tend to do is send an e-shirt out to our database at least three weeks in advance of the event and then probably another one a week before just to try and get people to sign up that way. Usually we'll get them to sign up by a survey monkey or Eventbrite, something similar like that, so we've got a dedicated knowing exactly who's coming to the event. And then we'll back that up with using social media advertising, so that could be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and just keep shouting about the event until the day comes, just so you can really start to build up that audience. Once we've got the actual amount of people that we need on the SurveyMonkey, etc., what we tend to do is try and follow up with them people.
usually not too early i'd probably say 24 hours before the event um, just to make sure that them clients are still attending because the last thing you want is people dropping out on the day so it's quite nice just to give them a quick call saying we're really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow evening are you still attending but yeah social media i think is very key but also make sure you actually targeting them people that are already buying into your brand anyway i mean there are lots of local media opportunities where they're looking for content so um, the ability to talk about it in advance with with a, a local paper maybe even local radio you know it's about putting yourself out there but deciding how big you want your event to be um, and, and what your numbers are so if you have a, a relatively small event um, i'm a big fan of, of selling out your event in advance so so planning um, is everything as well so i think um, asking people if there is somebody they'd like to bring that perhaps doesn't book with you currently is always a good way to do that as well and we've had some great success with that. One of the other aspects that, that's really important to uh, creating the um, excitement about the event is the, the visual aspect relating to the evening that you're going to put on. So whether that comes in conjunction with working with a supplier, um, great marketing visuals in terms of your invitations, um, using your social media, attractive pictures are going to get people's attention. If you're working with a tour operator or you've got a certain destination, then I think it's important to offer clients some kind of incentive to book. So, I don't know, if we, when we did a Canada event, we had free Rocky Mountain airbags or anything that's going to give something to that customer or even a £250 voucher to win on the evening. We did a little bit of a quiz at the end last time and it really does sort of build the hype and people like to win something at the event. If you're going to be doing drinks and canapes, get somebody else from an outside business to do the canapes for you. You haven't really got time to be worried about everything. I would say try and get other people to do as much of that as possible and then just to make sure the event runs smoothly. So we have an outside catering company that brings in canapes. We'll do drinks on the evening, make sure we're all chilled and ready to go. Um, get your suppliers to come early. I think sometimes suppliers rocking up 10 minutes before the event is not going to help on the evening. Get them to be there at least half an hour before. Get the banners set up. Get all the presentations set up and make sure you do a full run through the presentation. There's nothing worse than when you're doing a client event that actually on the evening, if the presentation goes wrong or you're having to rush around sorting technical issues out. So I suppose just doing a bit of a pre-run through with your suppliers and just standing up and telling people what the actual run through of the evening is going to be. Having an incentive to book within a certain amount of time will definitely help generate the inquiries post the actual event. So if we say, for example, book within a week and you're guaranteed to get this particular amount off your booking, you're going to get this as part of it, that's shown to really work for us and it creates the urgency with the client that they need to come back to you to book that particular um, product. Um, but also I think calling the customers, just have a chat and say, did you enjoy the evening? Was it everything you expected? Any feedback? And just build that conversation. I like to do a little questionnaire, just three or four questions afterwards. Were there speakers that you enjoyed? Do you feel we could have done anything better? Um, are you more likely to go to that destination than you were before you came? Mm -hmm. And it's all about that interaction with the, with the client. You've had a personal evening with them, so it, it's a personal conversation, isn't it? So I think it's really important that, that you capitalise on that momentum. Why else would you put the hard work in if you're not prepared to follow it up quickly afterwards? Have somebody from within your team that's dedicated to capturing video on the night and photos. If you've got a friend that's a photographer or a client that's a photographer, ask them. We've had some great success with that. If you get really good pictures, you're creating a content and a story to tell afterwards that gives you, should, should all be part of your marketing mix. Every event that we've done, I always send pictures afterwards to the local media to say the event went really well, here it is. We've always had coverage. Don't get any bookings on the actual evening is not to be disheartened. I think a lot of people don't book on events uh, on the evening. It tends to come in three to four days, sometimes weeks after the event. But if it's a big destination, somewhere like Canada and New Zealand, people like to think about what they've seen and absorb that and then come back to you once they've had time to actually go through all the details. So definitely don't get disheartened. I mean, we've had a couple of events recently where people have come back two, three, four weeks later. Um, and it just shows that long-term commitment that actually you are gonna get these bookings in the long term.